Now, I want to talk about the Christ, the Redeemer today. And I can tell you, and I will tell you, some of the glorious things that, that happened when Christ redeemed us. The, the truth and doctrine of redemption is beautiful. But there is nothing like meeting the Redeemer in person. That brings redemption into life and makes it really personal. So my heart this morning is, is not just to give you understanding, it's to introduce you to the person, Christ the Redeemer. Um, but to start, I, I, I have to say a little bit about what redemption is about. Now, redemption um, in, in Christian circles covers the whole gamut of salvation. But in the Bible, it is specifically um, referring to the issue of a slave and the slave market. That's, that's what it's referring to. So if a person got into trouble, if they got into serious debt, they, they would often have to sell their land to get out of debt or even sell themselves. Or they could be um, by uh, circumstances where they have committed crime or something or where they've been defeated in war. They can end up, they could end up in those times being a slave. Now, there was no way of getting free of being a slave except if a benefactor came along. And he came along and paid for your freedom. He paid your debts off and he bought you and he, and he paid and you were freed. Now, when Jesus gave his life, when he died, that's what he did for us. He paid off all our debts. And, and there is some magnificent truths about what redemption did. He freed you from the penalty of sin. You were under a penalty of sin, a slave to sin, but he came and he paid the price to set you free. That's magnificent, isn't it? Um, he set you free. If you look in Galatians 3, he set you free from the curse of the law. Now, under the law, if you didn't fulfill the commands of God, you came under a curse. And the curses were horrible. It meant your children would be scattered. You would suffer from disease. You'd be defeated by your enemy. Well, Christ came and he set you free from that. In fact, you cannot receive the promises of God until you see you're freed from the curse. You look at Galatians 3. It says he redeemed us in order that you might receive the promises of God. He freed us. Um, I've got to read you this scripture because it's just wonderful. He, he, he freed you from your enemy. Let me, let me read you this. this. This was when Zachariah was in the temple. And, um, and, and he, uh, he said this when his father Zachariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and redeemed his people he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand, the hand of all who hate us to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. Now, the, these sort of things are magnificent, aren't they? But if I just preach those things, there is a weakness. If I just preach what, what I've just spoken about. Do you know what the weakness is? I'll tell you what the weakness is. You can be set free, but then get embroiled again. That's the weakness. If we just preach that part of redemption, you can, you can get set free, but get in debt again. You can get embroiled in sin again. That's the weakness. So we need to preach the full aspect of Christ the Redeemer. 
And there is something. You see, Christians, including me, have fallen into that trap for years. We get set free, we sing hallelujah, and then we get embroiled again. Why is that? What did Christ do to stop that happening? I'll tell you this. This is a magnificent truth. When he redeemed you, he bought you. He bought you. You are no longer your own. That's what he says. I'm going to read you some scriptures from this. Listen to this. For you know, this is 1 Peter 1. For you know it was not with perishable things such as silver and gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life set down to you by your fathers, forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or de defect. 1 Corinthians 7, you were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. 1 Corinthians 6, listen to this. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. That's what it says. Now, I'll tell you, you say, well, I'm, I'm not sure if I want to be freed and, and come under somebody's ownership. I'll tell you, when you come under the ownership of Christ, you are free. Because he brings grace to you and freedom, not bondage that Satan does. So I said to God, I, I, I said to God, Lord, show me, show me what it is to be bought by God. I want to know it. And, and there, there, is a, there is a remarkable scripture, which I, ha I haven't got involved in. I haven't really got to know. But I want to uh, preach it to you, this scripture, because it speaks of what it is to be bought by God. And it's beautiful. So I'm going to read. This scripture actually is about sexual immorality. But the implications are far bigger than that, as you'll see. So I want Corinthians 6. I want to read this to you. Listen to this. Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Hallelujah. Food for the stomach and the stomach for food. But God will destroy them both. And then this, this is the verse that I particularly want to speak on. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead. And he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? But if he said the two will become flesh, one flesh. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body. But he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Now, I, I, I just, I want to speak just the, on this scripture. Your body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. So I want to just talk about this um, uh, just for a few. Firstly, your body is for the Lord. When he redeemed you, he didn't redeem you so you could just get, say, oh, I'm saved. I can do what I like now. You belong to God. I, uh, sometimes we, we have forgotten this magnificent thing that when Christ bought you, you belong to him. Now, years ago in the Old Testament, the, the Gnostics, particularly the Gnostics, believed this, that the, the spirit 
everything that was spiritual was good, but everything that was matter was bad. That means your body is bad. That's what they taught. So it's what happens inside you. It's not what you do or your body that, that's irrelevant. Well, that's not how the Bible sees it. The body, the, the body is considered sacred by God. Your body is considered beautiful by God. I'll tell you why. There's three reasons. Firstly, this, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. If you have been born again, if you've received him, Christ is living in your body. That means you have the eternal creator in your body. That is a magnificent, isn't it? That means you, are the, you hold the residence for God if you're born again. That certainly makes your body important, doesn't it? My house is important because we're living in it. But my body is precious because God's living in it. That's one thing. The second thing is this, and this is even more amazing. Your body is a member of Christ himself. Your body is part of Christ. I, suddenly, this, this truth s suddenly broke into me. I just suddenly realized... Um, uh, he, he gives a description. If, if you commit a sin or, co or do something, you're involving Christ. I, I, suddenly I saw some of the things I have done that I've involved Christ in, and I've had to repent because my body belongs to God. In fact, it's a member of Christ. The, th the third thing, why your body is important, that's how you reveal Christ to other people. I praise God that I have a spirit and, and God communicates to my spirit and he's made my spirit inside me alive. But I don't communicate to the world with my spirit. I communicate to the world with the way I speak, the way I touch people the way I do acts of kindness, that's how I communicate to the world. It's through my body. Do you see? I thank God that he's touched my emotions and my thinking, but that doesn't touch the world. The people outside are touched by my body and your body. Do, do you understand that? Now, the, the repercussions of this are incredible. Uh, that they're amazing that if my body is for the Lord, that there are repercussions. Firstly, do I look after my body? <laughs> this is very practical. I'm, I'm, I'll tell you, I, I want to live so I can communicate Christ to others for a long time. I know I'm getting on, but, I, but I'm going to look after my body. Is that right? Look after your body. Don't overindulge your body. Give it rest. Feed it properly. Not with McDonald's every day. I, I love McDonald's like anybody else. But um, it's, it's nurturing our body because it's the temple of God and it's the way we reach the world. That's number one. Secondly, protect your body from sin. Don't indulge in wrong behavior because, um, because it involves Christ and it, and, it, and it affects your body when you sin. Are you with me? You see, what, what happened is this. When, when we got saved, a transfer took place. Um, I'm, I, I don't know if you're a football fan, but you can... You, if you're in a team and you, you're transferred to another team, uh, if, if the money's paid, you're transferred to another team. Before, before you got saved, you were under the dominion of Satan. You were a slave to sin. But Christ transferred you. You got transferred into the kingdom of God. You are under a new manager a new master of your soul. And he is wonderful. 
He's full of grace. And he will free you from sin. Do, do you, are you with me? You are no longer. Guard, guard your bodies like anything. The third thing you can do, and, and listen, folks, we're going to break bread in a minute. And the third thing that you can do with your body is to offer it to God. Off, this, this is the greatest thing you can do. Do you know you can get saved but not offer your body to God? Offer your members of your body totally to him. I just want to read you some scriptures. This, when you meet the Redeemer, this is what you do. I, I tell you, when I've seen this, I've, I've got down on my knees. I've offered every part of my body to God. Let me read you this. Romans 12, verse 1. Let me. Romans 12, verse 1 says this. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Folks, worship is not just singing songs. It's offering your whole body to God, every part, every part. Romans 6. Oh, this is magnificent. Do you know, I've struggled with Romans for years. But listen to this. Let me just read you this. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of rightness, righteousness. For sin shall not be your master because you are not under law but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. <clears throat> Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey. Whether you are slaves to sin, God forbid that, folks, which leads to death or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you have been entrusted. <clears throat> I, I, I've just discovered just how wonderful my body is and how I can give it to me. That is, the, your body is for the Lord. But there's another aspect I want to tell you, and it's this. When you offer yourselves to the Lord, the Lord is for the body. In other words, God becomes your protector of your body. Now, the only way I can describe this, if you've heard this illustration, um, uh, the church has probably heard it thousands of times, but I'm, I'm going to tell it to you because it illustrates the truth. When I was um, get, getting, um, getting on in my years, I was still not married. In fact... I was still single um, when I was 30 in my late 30s. Now, when you're single, plots are hatched, particularly in churches, to get you married off. Um, so I, I actually, um, at my wedding day, um, there was a group called IFW, which was disbanded on my wedding day. It was Intercessors for Walford. Um, they were praying for me to get a wife, you see. Now, um, you won't believe this, but I was sent all around the country. With churches that had single ladies, they wanted me to meet. I got sent everywhere to preach um, to meet these single ladies. But one took the biscuit. I was sent to Norway. I was sent to Norway to preach in Norway because they had a lady over there that they wanted me to meet, you see. Now, there was, something, there was something remarkable about this lady. She was a millionaireess. She had major stores in every city in Europe. Um, so as I, as I was going over in the plane, I, I, um, I fantasized a bit 
And I, I, I thought to myself in the front of the church, being married. And I said to her, all that I have is yours. <laughs> and then I waited. And she said, and all that I have is yours. I went, way. <laughs> Do you see? When you offer yourselves to God, he offers himself to you. As you know, the, the relationship didn't work out. <laughs> but I want to say this to you. It, it, it is not a problem giving yourself totally to God because he gives you all that he is. And you say, Mick, Mick, what, what does he give me? I'll tell you what he gives you. He gives you life. Abundant life. He fills you with his life. I tell you, it is magnificent. It is magnificent. It's, let me tell you this. The first thing he does when he gives you his life is he frees you from sin. Life is more powerful than sin. Paul said, the spirit, the, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. It's a greater, sin, greater thing when life is filled. You, you, if you go out and you look at the trees and, 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 and the leaves are coming off the trees. It's a lovely time, Autumn, when all the leaves come off. But there's some leaves don't come off. You see, even through the harshest winter, there are still leaves on the tree. And they stay there until new life comes. And when new life comes, they are thrown off. Now, I'll tell you this. There are some things in our lives that we can't get rid of. They stick there through thick and thin. But I'll tell you this. When God infuses his life into you, you are freed. I believe it. God is for your body. He'll fill your body with righteousness. Oh, what, what could be greater than be filled with his righteousness? Let, let me say this to you. When he gives you life, it's not a one-off. It's, it's received daily. It's by faith you receive the life of God. It's not, you, oh, I'm just going to have the life of God. No. You take hold of his life by faith. And he infuses his life to you. I, I tell you, he frees you from sin. The second thing he does is he fills you with health. Romans 8, it says, If the Spirit who raised Christ from the dead lives in you, he will give life to your mortal bodies. I'm, I'm telling you, when, when you offer your bodies to the Lord, he is for your body. He wants you to live a long life. He wants you to live a life of praise. And he will fill your bodies with health and healing. Um, two weeks ago, Simon spoke on the mediator, which was great, Simon. This is scripture. This, this is a brilliant scripture. Listen to this. You have to listen to it. This is a guy who's, who's, who's on his deathbed. And it's Job. It's Job 33. Let, let me see this. Uh, or a man, this is verse 19, or a man may be chastened on a bed of pain with constant distress in his bones so that his very being finds food repulsive and his soul loathes the choicest meat. His flesh wastes away to nothing and his bones once hidden now stick out. His soul draws near to the pit and his life to the messengers of debt, death. Yet, if there is an angel on his side as a mediator, one out of a thousand, to tell a man what is right for him, to be gracious to him and say, spare him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom for him. Then his flesh is renewed like a child's. It is restored as in the days of his youth. He prays to God and finds favor with him. He sees God's faith face and shouts for joy. He is restored by God to his righteous state. Then he comes to men and says, I have sinned and perverted what was right. But I did not get what I deserved. 
He redeemed my soul from going down to the pit, and I shall live to enjoy the light. <laughs> How lovely. When he, let me tell you this. When he redeems you, if you look through Scripture, sickness and sin go together. When he redeems you, he redeems you from sin and sickness. We're going to break bread this morning. I believe he wants to outflow his life to your mortal bodies. He will renew your bodies when Christ comes again. If you're born again, he will renew your bodies. But he wants to refresh and heal them and restore them today, your mortal bodies. Hallelujah. So first, he wants to give you life that defeats sin. Secondly, he wants to give you life that, that gives you health and healing. Lastly, he wants you to give you life so you can impart it to other people. Amen. He wants to fill you with life so that when you, when you speak to people, when you speak, you speak life. Do you know this is true? I, I can tell. <laughs> I can tell when I preach and I can tell when I speak. I have actually seen words of God going into people. I've seen it. I don't, I don't know how. <laughs> I, 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 was in a, I was doing an outreach <laughs> ages ago. And um, I was on the street giving out. I was just doing some witnessing on the street. And this, this girl came up to me. I was, just, I was just standing there. This girl came up to me and she said this. I, I, I remember it. I'll remember this forever. She came up to me. She, this is the first thing she said. She said, I am an utter failure. That's what she said. I am an utter failure. I've never met her before. I am an utter failure. And God gave me the word of God for her. And I saw it go in. I saw the fact that God loved her and had a plan for her and wanted to rescue her. And I saw the word go in, and she screamed and ran. She ran up the street. I never saw her again. But I do know this. She had the word of God in her. Uh, I'm, I'm, I am anticipating to see her in glory. Because the word will come to fruit. You can speak. Let, let me, don't you want that? Don't you want to speak when you're friends? Don't you want life to be communicated when you speak? The, the proverb says, your mouth has the power of life and death. Do you know when you touch somebody, do you know you can impart life? I'll tell you another story. I was, um, I was doing a wedding. No, I wasn't doing a wedding. Um, I was at a wedding. Um, I got invited to Leslie's cousin's wedding. It was in Bath. It was right posh, too. It was in, a, it was in an Anglican sort of um, school or something, I, I remember. And, and um, I, I, they asked me to pray for the bride and groom. So I said, yes. Uh, uh, the, the, the vicar came up to me. He said, um, he, just to tell me, you know, when I was praying and that. He said, um, he said, uh, you, you got your prayer written down? I said, oh, no, I'll just pray for him. He said, oh, you do spontaneous praying, do you? <laughs> so so, so he, I said, yes, yes. So, um, and, and God, had, God had been teaching me about communicating life. They, they're not saved, these two. Uh, they just armed me to pray. So I came out to pray for them. I took them by the hand, and I, I just communicated the blessing of God to them. And I felt life went out of me. I just felt life. You know, when Jesus, when somebody touched him, he said, life went out. Um, that, that was all. We, uh, nothing happened. They went back. I was at the reception, and the bride came up to me, and she said, what happened when you prayed? I felt electricity go through me. Uh, she's still not saved. I, I just can't fathom this out. She hasn't saved it now. I thought she would fall down on her knees and repent, but she didn't. But I do know this, that when you touch people, um, but listen, when you pray for the sick, you, 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 you don't just do it automatically. You do it in faith. 
that the life of God will be imparted into people's lives. It's great fun when you go around shaking people's hands. If you've got a man of faith, a woman of faith, shake their hands and impart the life of God to people. Do you know, when you do acts of kindness, you do not do acts of kindness to make you look good. You do acts of kindness to glorify God. And when you do them to glorify God, the acts of kindness will be imparted with power. Do you understand? Sometimes we do acts of kindness and people are kind back to us. That's not the issue. We do acts of kindness with faith that the life of God is imparted. Let me tell you this. Christ the Redeemer um, has, has bought you. You're not just bought, you're part of Christ. And he's here. He's here right now. Do you know, he wants, I, I believe, when we break bread, he is going to set people free. I, I, don't, I don't know what, what he, he, he can set you free from anger. He can set you free from addiction. Let me tell you, uh, um, ordinary drugs can be addictive. It can set you free from alcohol. It can set you free from pornography, from immorality. He is a free in God. And he can set you free. But not just set you free, he will purchase you. And become your Lord. And when you do that, he, he imparts to your body freedom and health, power. And how we need it 